how to get more consulting business. In this video, we're going to talk about how you're able to grow your consulting business and make sure that you hit that subscribe button and the like button if you enjoy this type of content. Now, let's jump into the presentation. How are you getting more consulting business? Well, let me show you a few slides here with some common examples of how people attempt to get more business. The first one is, and this is probably the most common one, doing a good job and hoping for more business through word of mouth and referrals. The second one is doing nothing and hoping for more. It's probably not as uncommon as you think. The third one, spending more money on advertising and specialists hoping for that to produce the desired result of getting more business. The fourth one, spending more on travel events and sponsorships in the hope of that will generate the business that you want. And finally, the ad hoc approach, or what I tend to call the shiny object approach, where you jump from activity to activity based on what you read in the news, what a competitor is doing, what a friend told you to do, and hoping for that to produce real results for your business. Now, can you spot a pattern here with these different options? Hoping for something to happen is not the same as having a reliable strategy in place that produces the outcome that it's intended to produce. Hope is never a reliable strategy, and it tends to lead to three different issues with growing your business. The first one is you're probably not going to see enough business if you're approaching your business development this way. The second one is you're probably going to see a lot of ebbs and flows and a lack of consistency. And the final one is since you have no direct understanding and control of what produces more business, it's going to be very difficult for you to plan. And you're not going to be able to be strategic because you don't really know how much you're, you're going to make this month, how much you're going to make next month. And it's going to be very challenging for you to hire and plan for investments of different kinds. So this is something that you definitely would want to avoid. The reason why it's a bit challenging for you as a solo entrepreneur or a business owner or even a key stakeholder in a business, because your time is limited. And that means that business development and marketing rarely is at the top of the list because there's so many other things that you need to do in a day. This also makes it very difficult for you because you won't have the time that's needed to properly understand what moves to dial for your business. So you can't create the strategy. And secondly, you're not going to be able to execute that strategy either because you don't have the time and you don't have the knowledge. And this tends to end up in a much more fragmented approach to how you grow your business. And this may resonate with you as in, you spend time on business development when you have the time and energy to do it. And those times may be very few and far between. So what you want to do instead is have a holistic system for growing your business, where you focus on the activities that matter and where you work systematically. It's not something that you do when you feel like it once per month or every other weekend. It's something that you do consistently every day, a little bit at a time. And it's really important to stay the course because Rome wasn't built in one day. And a lot of the things that we're talking about here are relationships driven. And relationships is not something that we're able to cultivate overnight. So we need to allow for ample time to be able to cultivate those contacts and take them from the, the initial seeds of a business relationship to a fruitful business relationship that you're able to monetize and where you're able to provide value. Now, with all of that said, what is it then that actually drives business for most consultants? Well, it's two different areas. And as you probably can recognize, a lot could be covered within this space. So we're going to have to be a little bit specific. So let me help define these two different areas. The first one is visibility. And that revolves around becoming noticed and staying on top of mind. 
The second one is network. And that revolves around making the most of your existing contacts and expanding your network consciously with relevant parties. So when you're doing all of these different things the right way, then that tends to produce the desired outcome, which generally is make more money, have better consistency, and also getting a diversity in terms of the sources of business so that you're not simply reliant on one or two different clients. So if we take it further one step and look at what's underneath the hood, what type of activities is it that will produce the result here that will give you more visibility, that will give you a broader network? Well, before we can get into that, we need to define who it is that you're focusing on. And it may seem obvious who your clients are, but in our experience, doing an exercise like this is extremely helpful to further define it. So as I said, we need to look at who your target audiences are and what your ecosystem looks like. And this may sound fancy, but it simply means who are the entities and individuals that are able to provide you with business, both directly and indirectly. Once you have those individuals and entities mapped out, you're able to take it one step further and look at, well, who they are already covered, but what they care about and where they are. So are you able to find them online or offline or maybe both online and offline? Once you know that, then you have a much better understanding of who it is that you are able to approach and that you should be approaching to grow your business. There's one final thing that we need to look at, though, and that is how these individuals make decisions. So what is it that makes them hire someone such as yourself? And you can base this on your experiences in the past. You can look at uh, why they choose to work with your com competitors. So just drilling down into this is going to make you understand what really drives these individuals. And that's going to enable you to shape your communication and the narrative in a way that really builds rapport with those audiences. Once that's done, we can start looking at the actual activities. And we've defined them here and classified them into four different categories. The static, active, expanding, and leveraging areas. And the static area is not as static as it may seem. You're definitely not going to be sitting in an armchair while you're, while you're doing that. But it's a little bit more reactive than the three other areas. And we're going to talk about all of these areas in detail and what actual activities that you can conduct within the scope of each of them. So if we take it one layer down, then the static area is really uh, consisting of offline and online presence. And this could be a website, it could be your uh, LinkedIn profile or any other type of platform that where your contact details and information about your company and services are displayed. The second area is act the active area, and that's geared more towards communication and visibility. That could, for, for instance, be participating in events, uh, being on panels, uh, doing webinars, etc. And it really depends entirely on the nature of your business and the nature of your clientele. There's no one size fits all here. The third area is the expanding area. So that is revolving around growing your network consciously with relevant parties and also cultivating those uh, contacts. And the final area is a leveraging area. And that really revolves around creating value for your key network, your clients, that is. And uh, if you're able to do that well, then you're also able to leverage those contacts so that your network essentially networks on your behalf. But how easy is it then to perform all of these activities? Because not everybody has the necessary knowledge to be able to do this, which is also why my company does what we do. So if we just look at them one at a time from the left, the static area, it's usually fairly easy to do it yourself by just using search engines to understand how you build a website, what kind of content that goes on a website, you know, how you build out your social media presence. 
And it's also relatively easy to find individuals that can do this for you. The active area is a little bit more challenging, but still you're able to find specialists that can help you with this, just showing you how to make the most of LinkedIn's algorithm, you know, how you're able to build out your brand or whatever it is that makes sense for your business. But it's still a little bit more challenging than within the static area. The real challenge comes when we move into the expanding and the leveraging areas. And that's really where we have the network aspect of things, because quality help is really hard to find here. Most business development professionals and marketing people and lead generators are generalists. And most of them are focused on kind of like traditional online type of business development activities. Um, they rarely have the necessary experience to understand how you uh, initiate and cultivate contacts with a professional audience. And what you want to achieve is for all of these areas to work in perfect harmony. There should be a coherent system here where each area naturally links into the, uh, to the next area and they all work together. The way you obtain this outcome is obviously by understanding each of the areas sufficiently to be able to perform the necessary activities. But if we sort of look at it more holistically here, you can see that the static and active areas are usually more of supporting type of character. So visibility tends to support networking and leveraging your network. Now, this is obviously, as I mentioned previously, not always the case because some consultants are able to generate business purely based on their visibility because they're simply so well known. It could also be a question of them being so established and having been around for so long that all they need is that visibility. They don't really need to do a lot of other things, everything else being equal, but things may also change along the way. And we do have clients that have been exposed to this. It's a huge business risk if you are not utilizing all of these different activities to generate business and also future-proof your business to build longevity in your operations. So let's just look at these activities in a little bit more detail. When it comes to the static area, as I mentioned, LinkedIn is probably one of the best sources for uh, enhancing your visibility. Uh, it's the largest professional network in the world, over half a billion um, members and hundreds of millions of active users. So that's a place where you want to be. You also want to make sure you have a website because that website will either serve as a source of information about your business whenever someone searches for information about your business. Now, on some occasions, in particular, if you have a very well-defined niche, your website may also be the driver of business because professionals that are looking for that particular type of service may very well use search engines to find companies that provide those services. That's not always the case, but sometimes it is. And typically, as I mentioned, it has to do with that niche focus. And then finally, for some listings of different kinds uh, can be helpful to generate business or enhance visibility. Now, when it comes to the active area, very often that comes down to communicating on social media, such as LinkedIn. It could be a question of writing uh, columns, et cetera, uh, both in paper form, um, offline that is, and online. It could be other types of activities such as participating in events, conferences, speaking at panels, uh, uh, participating in, in radio, TV shows, all kinds of different things. And again, there's not a one size fits all. The activities that work for your business may not necessarily be the same as the activities that are working for the next door business. And then when it comes to the expanding and leveraging areas, here is really where you're going to see the most bang for your buck. It won't often be quick, but it'll be extremely important for you to build out your network and make the most of your existing network. 
So when it comes to your, your existing network, which is the leveraging area, it really comes down to delivering value on multiple levels. And if you do so, your network will network on your behalf. But there's more that you can do to really scale that up so that it creates a real impact for your business. Then we have the expanding area, which revolves around connecting with relevant parties. All of these different target audiences that we talked about earlier on in the presentation, that's where you want to put your emphasis. So it comes down to connecting with them and also maintaining contact because when you're dealing with relationships, these bursts of efforts are rarely as effective as a more patient strategy. So what it really all comes down to here is consistency. It's much better to do a little bit of work every day rather than to batch your work and do it once every week, once every month, whenever you feel like it. So you want to make sure that you stay consistent because if you do, it's generally much more effective when it comes to network cultivation. Because ultimately, we want to make sure that these individuals get comfortable with interacting with you. And if they only hear from you once per year when you want something, then it's not going to be as effective as a more patient and refined strategy. An additional point to mention here is habits. Because if you do something consistently, if you do something for 15 minutes per day, every day, three, six, five, or 250 days per year, then you are creating a habit and that's going to make it much easier for you to continue with that habit. But if you're doing something irregularly and it's not consistent, then you're not sowing the seeds for a habit. You're basically creating an obligation for yourself. And an obligation is not something that you want to have on your to-do list every morning when you wake up. And then finally, results are improved through incremental efforts. So even though it may not seem much, 15 to 30 minutes per day over a year, over two years, tends to produce exponential results. And this is how things work. And I'll be talking about that more in upcoming videos. If you do a little bit every day, then it will have a snowball effect over time. So ultimately, what it all comes down to and the benefits for you is when you are applying this kind of coherent system that is fully harmonized, all of the different activities are fully harmonized, then you have your roadmap, which means that you know what to do, when to do it and how to do it. You're also going to be much more effective when you're approaching it that way, because there's no ambiguity. Every day when you look at this, you know exactly what you need to focus on. And you also understand what kind of outcome that is to be expected from your activities. You will know that Rome wasn't built in one day, so there's no reason to get frustrated or doubt the strategy simply because you're not seeing the desired results after two days. And then finally, you are much more likely to produce a positive return on your investment, both time, money and energy, that is, when you're approaching things this way. So that was everything that I had to show you. So if you like this content, then make sure that you hit that like button and the subscribe button. And um, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks very much for listening in.